welcome to East Coast DNA. Uh, today we have Natasha Sophia, a Canadian independent singer songwriter based out of Truro, Nova Scotia. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So uh, we had a little bit of a chat. This is our <laughs> second run in an interview. I'll admit that right off the bat since we're giggly and maybe seem a little ridiculous to anyone just tuning in here. <laughs> so uh, Natasha is a non-binary, chronically ill singer-songwriter based out of Truro. And this is your first year showcasing at Music Nova Scotia, which you will be on the Saturday, November 5th. Yes. Crown and Moose? Yes. At midnight. At midnight. The time that we change times. Yeah. It's that night. Yes. But so you'll play at midnight and then a couple other people play and then time will go back because it's the fall. Sure. And then maybe you have to play again. If I well, have to. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll come find you if that happens at the witching <laughs> hour. So uh, we had covered it just briefly earlier, but maybe I'll get you to uh, do a little bit of a recap for everyone that didn't get to hear what we just did. <laughs> Um, so you started your music career in the last couple of years this is your first year really pushing things out there, yeah, yeah. but I'm assuming that your association with, uh, Tarquin kind of predates the more recent stuff that I'm looking at here. Yeah. Okay. So maybe for our listeners and viewers, um, you give a little bit of history on, uh, who Natasha Sophia is, um, your encounter with Tarquin and how that led to you being this uh, showcaser out of Toronto, Nova Scotia in 2022. Yeah. Um, how do I start? I don't know. I was born in Manitoba, um, moved to Toronto when I was 10. I grew up doing dance. Um, I've always been very artsy, very bad at sports, very bad, very bad. Not uh, not into the sports ball, but the the music and theater were kind of pulling yeah. at your heartstrings. Yeah, I liked sports. They don't like me. Ah, uh, fair. Enough. That, that's yeah. fair. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I'm not into the sports too much myself. But I mean, I've been into an NHL game. I've played <laughs> baseball. I take my kids to sports, so it's yeah. it's a thing. Like I played a lot of soccer as a kid, and then I also did in high school. And I was always nicknamed the Gazelle, and I like to thank dance for that. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to no run like a normal person. But anyways, I digress. Um, yeah, I got into theater in junior high. I auditioned for a musical. I was like, why not? And then that just kind of snowballed into theater being like my whole life. Um, I thought that that's what I was going to do. Who knows? I still might. I still very much love theater and it's still a very 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 big part of my life and my heart um specifically like musical theater um I went to Toronto Randolph College for performing arts in Toronto in the annex um didn't graduate um but as just going through a tough time needed to part ways with the theater world for a little bit but in doing so, I ended up pursuing independent music because I've been writing since I was like 15, um, mostly as a form of coping with emotions and- Sure. Yeah. Pulling but, from your personal experiences. And as I said in the intro, being both having a chronic illness and being non-binary, I'm sure there's- Lots of inspiration in there to pull from, aside from just your daily, day-to-day -day life that everyone has things to pull from. Yeah. Yeah. And also a lot of mental health stuff, which sure. really goes hand in hand with the chronic illness. Cause yep. I was, I was going to kind of assume. Yeah. That. Yeah. And so when you were in Toronto, that was like, 
not a super long period of time, but was that a period of time when your chronic illness had started? Is that kind of leading to you stepping away from the theater a little bit at that point, or was it more later things were happening that direction anyway? Yeah, I, I mean, in retrospect, looking like looking back in hindsight you can yeah. notice things a lot easier and i'm like oh i've actually been dealing with fibro for a really long time um but i it definitely became a lot more prevalent in toronto i was there sure. for like three and a half ish years okay living there so even after i was done school i just stayed in toronto for a bit i was like okay. well i'm just, i might as well just stay here see what else there is for me um and the healthcare system in Toronto, they just have a lot more resources than we do in Nova Scotia, which yeah. I do. We're not even going to open that can of worms. Well, my co-host <laughs> is a paramedic who oh my gosh. is on, not in this episode because he has some long-term COVID symptoms that are preventing him from doing this. So he, he, he would actually probably with the chronically ill part he would a hundred percent understand everything that you're saying yeah um just how your day-to-day -day can be strenuous and it's not something you can always plan around yeah no so is that that's the time frame when you before you moved back to nova scotia yeah uh when you would have hooked up with uh tarquin as far as creating some music as well yeah we met in august of 2018 okay wow <laughs> yeah i know it messes you up when you start doing math ah, yeah, numbers years time exists um yeah no we met um because she is also an independent musician uh she was looking for some artists to collaborate with as well as um like backup singers and stuff and we the day that we met we had never met before we were just hanging out me and Tarquin and some guy that was playing guitar and we were just all jamming but Tarquin and I kept speaking at the exact same time and saying the same words and the guy we were with was like are you sure you've never met before oh really like that was your first time meeting the first time that's we've hilarious. ever met in yeah. person that's awesome and just an immediate connection and now she's my best friend just absolutely yeah so you guys wrote Middle middle Ground together? Yes. And was that your first song then? Or did you already have some of your own original stuff that you were doing before that? Um, We wrote Middle Ground recently. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Probably, I wasn't sure the dates on it. Yeah. I think... around like the summer of last year I okay. Would say. okay yeah 2021 is when we wrote it okay yeah and so since then you've been doing all solo stuff and you're now based out of Truro and as we had mentioned you hosted uh Halifax Pride's Queer Music Fest this year and yeah. you opened for Flochella yeah that was phenomenal <laughs> it was so much fun and as I had mentioned to earlier on, before we started recording, besides your four songs that everyone can find on Spotify, uh, your YouTube channel has a lot more content on it with you playing with some covers and originals. Yeah. And I will mention again that more than this, I ha I'm a big fan of that song. Thank you. And I will be looking for you to have a studio recording of that 
Thank you. I put the demo of it up on Bandcamp because I was like, I really like this song. So. It's good. Thank Actually, you. <laughs> if you don't mind, can we play out with that song for this episode? Heck yeah. How about we'll play Middle Ground on the segment and we'll play a little snippet of that for people to hear. So everyone that's listening to this now, Middle Ground that we just talked about, you heard a piece of that as the intro <laughs> to this interview. And in a moment when we play off at the end, we'll be uh, using the more than this. Well, I'll grab a copy from your band camp so that you get something back from it too. So where should people be looking for you besides at Crown and Moose on the Saturday Night of Music Week? Yeah. Where should people be looking for Natasha Sapia in the future? Um, as of right now, I don't have anything lined up. I'm trying to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but... I post things on my Instagram, which is at Natasha Sophia Music. Uh, my Twitter, Nat Sophia Music. Okay. And yeah, but I am is really the... awkward with reaching out to venues. But I'm oh I'm really trying to yeah I'm trying to play out more. But I I'm very bad at reaching out to people. Well, as I'd mentioned too. It... You've labeled yourself the sad song sensation, but <laughs> you give off an incredible optimism. You're you're you. smiling and friendly. So I'm sure if you're reaching <laughs> out to them, they're not going to have any idea that you're having nervous issues reaching out to them. <laughs> You'll be fine. And when you do have some dates or if you're ready to start releasing some new material, you know some people that have a music news podcast that could maybe help promote you a little bit too yeah. so feel free to reach out to us a lot of these thank you these bonus episodes are 20 to 30 minutes each so they're they're sometimes rushed with some people and a lot of people like yourself that are up and coming we like to feature people and say like hey here's somebody new to keep an eye on but after you have some traction with some performances and some new material would absolutely love to have you come back on and maybe get a little bit more in depth oh with what's going on. That would, that would, that would be I, awesome. I would absolutely love that. Yeah. I have a new track coming out mid November, which I'm really excited about. Actually the track that I recorded with Thomas. Okay. At Fang. Yeah. So what is this song then? Why don't you talk about this song for a few minutes so people know uh, what to be looking for and then yeah. we'll uh, play off with your more than this song. Perfect. And we'll leave the, everybody with a whetted appetite for uh, the rest <laughs> of 22 and 23. Yeah, so um, I am releasing a song called Why Do I? It's very different uh, sonically from what I've released so far. It's a lot jazzier, groovier. I absolutely dig the direction that we went with it. Um It's it's just a really fun song. I mean, the lyrics aren't that fun when you listen to it because the whole theme is like, why do I do this to myself? Um, which I'm sure we've literally all said that to ourselves yeah. at least once. Relatable pop songs. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's absolutely what you're giving <laughs> off there. Relatable pop songs. Yeah, and it's I'm really proud of what it became it's so different from the demo that it started out as and it's just become a really awesome piece that i can't wait to share with people and yeah awesome and you said mid-november that comes out yes date will be announced Everyone can hear Soon. about it at Music Week. At Music Week, exactly. you, you'll be on the showcase stage at midnight and you can tell everyone when it's coming out. And <laughs> Right as the time changes. Try to make it, I'll try to make a little mental note so that I can talk about it on a recap afterwards or something. <laughs> or send us the information. I'll just, I'll actually, will. We'll do end up doing a recap after Music Week. And oh, perfect. If you send me the information, I'll read it off in that. Bet, yeah. yeah absolutely. All right. Well, we are going to run out of time. I do apologize. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. For the listeners, there was a little technical snafu at the beginning, but uh, 
anybody that has the opportunity to come catch Natasha at Music Week, like I said, it was the Saturday, November 5th at Crown and Moose at midnight. Yes. Midnight's easy to remember. Yeah. And uh, we would like to have you back on for sure. And the week of Music Week, we will be set up and I'll be floating around a couple different things myself. So i uh, like to stop by and say hi. Yeah. If I see you going through the class. I can't tell with the lighting right now, but do you still have the blue in your hair? That's really I, easy to do. Yes. Identify. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll see you for sure then. All right. And it'll All be right. touched up for music week. So it'll be vibrant oh, as heck. So yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks again for coming on. And <laughs> Thank you for having I'm me. Really excited to hear the new song. Thank and you. Uh, hopefully I get a chance to catch you at that live show as well. Yeah, I would love that. Thanks Great. again. All right. Thanks again. I didn't think that I would make it to 25 But here I am still struggling to stay alive I made a promise and I always keep my word Otherwise by now I'd be rotting with the worms I, I'm told to enjoy being young, wild and free What's freeing about being riddled with anxiety? I try my best to keep my head above the waves They keep crashing down, I want it all to go away I try and I try and I try Asking why, oh why I try and I try and I try This can't be all there is Tell me there's more to life than this I'm tired and I feel like shit Tell me there's more to life than this bad for complaining about my lot. I should focus on haves instead of have-nots. But I'm bitter, jaded, and upset that everything I've done wrong is implanted in my head. I try and I try and I try asking why, oh why. I try and I try and I try. This can't all there is Tell me there's more to life than this I'm tired and I feel like shit Tell me there's more to life than this I like to make myself believe That happiness will come after a good eat of sleep This can't be all there is Tell me there's more to life than this Mortal life than seeing black and white. Maybe I'm just colorblind. I try, but I can't get anything right. I've convinced myself that I'm doomed to fail. A self fulfilling prophecy carved out by my nails. A westward wind turned into a gale. This can't be all there is Tell me there's more to life than this I'm tired and I feel like shit Tell me there's more to life than this I'd like to make myself believe That happiness will come after a good eight hours of sleep Conversations in your head Man, this must be a hoax You feel like a joke Tell me 